Welcome to another Achieving Science video. This video is all about cell specialization. In this video, we're going to look at how cells have differentiated. So we've seen that eukaryotic organisms have developed specialized cells that have adapted to allow them to carry out specific functions. What we mean by cell differentiation is where a cell develops a specific structure which allows them to function. Let's start off with one of the most important cells, red blood cells. These cells are designed to carry oxygen around the body. They are found within the blood and they have different adaptations that allow them to carry out their specific role. One of these is that they have a biconcave shape to allow them to absorb oxygen and provide a large surface area. They have no nucleus so they can carry more and pack more oxygen in. They are full of a substance called haemoglobin. This substance combines with oxygen to form oxyhemoglobin to ensure that oxygen travels around the body. Next, we have a sperm cell, the cell that is required for fertilization, the male gametes. These cells carry the male DNA to the ovum to form a new offspring. Their adaptations include, they have a tail to allow them to swim, to be able to move, to be able to reach the egg. They have a head, and inside that head is all the genetic material of the father, which is carried to meet to the ovum. Behind the egg is lots of mitochondria. Mitochondria are organelles where respiration occurs. This respiration provides the energy needed to make sure the tail can move to allow the sperm to swim. Finally, the acrosome contains an enzyme, so when the egg is successful on meeting the sperm, it's able to eat its way into the egg. The next cell is the nerve cell, otherwise known as the neuron. The nervous system alone is made up of many, many neurons, and the function of the nervous system is to coordinate and control responses. Neurons carry electrical signals. As you can see, it's got a nucleus at one end. It's then got a long axon that kind of looks like a wire. But in this case, instead of being surrounded by plastic, it's surrounded by a fatty myelin sheath, which helps to ensure the transmission of electrical impulses is successful. Finally, at the ends, these ends will all link to other nerve cells to ensure the transmission to the correct place. Next, we have the muscle cells. Muscles are cells which can move, they can contract, and they can relax to allow the body to be able to move. These cells contain high numbers of mitochondria, again, so they can carry out lots of respiration, releasing lots of energy from our glucose to allow our muscles to contract. The next cell we're going to look at is the root hair cell, so found on a plant cell this time. Roots have tiny little hairs on the ends of them, known as root hair cells. These root hair cells provide a greater surface area so the plant is able to absorb as much water and minerals as it possibly can from the surrounding soil. Sticking with plants, we now look at the xylem and phloem. The xylem and phloem is kind of like the veins and arteries within a plant. They are different though. Xylem carry water and dissolve minerals within that water from the roots to the other parts of the plants. They're adapted. How are they adapted? Well, they have lots of individual dead cells with no end walls to allow them to be completely hollow. In order to keep their strength, the walls are strengthened by a substance called lignin. On the other hand, the phloem is different. The phloem carries your food, including glucose, where it's made in the leaves and it needs to be transported to other parts of the plant. It's different to the xylem because the cells all have ends with sieve plates which allow small holes in them to allow the, allow the glucose and the food to move through. The phloem are living compared to xylem which is dead. 
and they contain fewer organelles. We then move on to the palisade cells, which you would have met when you've studied the leaf. Palisade cells are found at the top of the leaf. They contain many chloroplasts. Chloroplasts are the site of photosynthesis, and this is why they're found at the top of the leaf, where they are receiving the direct sunlight. In photosynthesis, this is where carbon dioxide and water react together in the presence of sunlight to produce glucose and oxygen. By having many mitochondria, it allows maximum amount of light to be absorbed so maximum amount of photosynthesis can happen. They're also block shaped so they can fit in as many of these cells within the top of the leaf as possible.